everyone, my name is Chrissy Hughes and I'm a life skills and deployment educator at Fleet and Family Support Center in San Diego. I'm here today to bring you a course from our Return and Reunion curriculum. This course is a single sailor and we're going to be discussing some of the considerations with return and reintegration after deployment with single sailors. So I would recommend this course for new sailors, sailors on their first deployment or maybe their first full deployment or people maybe who are new to being single after deployment. Um, so to use at your discretion. So we've tailored these briefs to uh, deal with the current global pandemic and the COVID-19 crisis. So I would look for some additional briefs that talk a little bit more about what um, homecoming is like with regards to COVID-19, but I'm gonna tailor this brief um, to those specific considerations. Like for example, um, we usually talk about goal setting and um, safe, going out safely, um, that might not be an option after coming back from deployment, which is really unfortunate. Um, I can't imagine how difficult it would be being underway for such a long period of time and then coming home and being further quarantined or in a shelter in place or stay at home orders. So we have a lot of empathy for what you are experiencing and we just want you to know that all of us are experiencing a lot of um, uncomfortable feelings and a lot of transition. So I do have faith that we will eventually work through all of this together at some point. So just look out for each other, um, be open to change, um, just be as adaptive as you can possibly be, and then reach out when you feel like things are more than you can handle. So I'm not the typical face for someone who would uh, do a single sailor brief. Um, but I can tell you that I am married into this lifestyle. I'm married to an active duty service member, and I have actually had the experience of going underway. Um, I've gone underway three times now. Um, so these are some pictures of me on ships um, doing underway training. Um, that's actually the best part of my job. That's what I like doing the most. Um, so. I have had the experience. I don't know what it's like to go on a full deployment. I don't know what it's like in each of your workstations, but I do know what it's like to be on a ship in the middle of the ocean, unable to talk to family members and feeling like the days are like Groundhog Day, which they're a little bit like that at home now, okay? Um, not to scare you, but just to provide you some realistic expectations. There's two ways that, that uh, instructors can go during a, a transition like this and one is it's going to be okay we're all going to get through this pat yourself on the back it's going to be good or let me show you some realistic um, guidelines and what is it actually like so i'm going to try and toe the line between both but realize that um that you what's unique about this situation is it's not just you it's not just your ship it's not just the navy it's not just california it's the whole entire globe is going through something uncomfortable and um a series of changes that we've never experienced before. So the flow of this class is gonna go with um, kind of talking about celebrating the goals that you've achieved. And then we're also gonna wanna talk about setting some new goals now that you're home, all right? Um, then we're gonna talk about recognizing and understanding changes. There's gonna be a lot of changes that happen right now. Um, so let's, let's talk about how to process those. And then I have a few additional um, videos that I'm going to include that are just San Diego specific, okay? And then some general safety tips. So the first thing we want to talk about is I like to do, when I'm in class, I like to ask generally like, hey, who's ranked up during deployment? Um, who was able to uh, accomplish a health goal? Who um, placed on an exam? And I like to take a moment to celebrate that. So think about some of the accomplishments that you've had during deployment, um, I like when people say deployment is going to make me better. I'm going to come out of this in a better than I went into it. And think about that with regards to what the world is experiencing right now. Um, and I'm not going to put shame on anybody um, because there are people who will go through um, a global pandemic or go through deployment and they will come out having more issues than they did when they came in. And that's not to place judgment or say that they haven't been productive or that they have less worth. But I do want to say, think about how you can take a moment where there are a lot of things that you cannot control and focus on the things that you can control. So for me, for example, right now, 
I would really rather be on shift delivering this training. I would rather be in person, but I know that that's not an option for me. So I'm going to make myself a little uncomfortable, make my neighbors talk about me a little bit that I sit in my workspace and I talk to an iPad for a good portion of the day. Cause that's something I can control at this moment. Whereas when I can see you guys again, when I can go out and train like I'm used to, I don't have any control over that. So think about how that relates to your life on ship during deployment and how that will relate when you come back. But take a time if you have accomplished anything and take a moment to celebrate that. Even small victories. Um, even if you were able to break a bad habit for a certain period of time, just because you made it 15 days, I'm just going to use smoking as an example. Say you made it 15 days without smoking and then you started smoking again, that's 15 days that you have on your belt that you didn't have before. Okay? And don't look at it as I'm a failure and I didn't do a good job. It's like, nope, I messed, I, I didn't keep to that goal today. Let's see what I can do tomorrow. Same thing with working out, same thing with maintaining a healthy lifestyle, the same thing with maybe um, controlling some of the thought patterns you might have that are good or bad, all right? So I like to use this as an example too, if you're doing this in a workstation, maybe take a moment to pause. Um, what, was, what was the most difficult part of deployment? Difficult part of deployment. I would think maybe there might've been some missed ports. I would think that would be pretty upsetting for some people, feeling a lot more cabin fever than on a normal deployment. Um, a lot of people will bring up other things like uh, eating the same food every day, um, doing the same thing, everything feels like Groundhog Day, maybe not getting as much time off as I wanted to, I haven't been with my family, so whew, difficult stuff. But ask those questions um, of your support system as well, the people you work with, your family members. And if you're in a relationship and everyone's in a relationship with someone on the civilian side, if you have a friend, acquaintance, family members, parents, siblings, ask these questions of them as well. What was the most difficult part of me being away? And most of the time they'll say something like, it was so hard not knowing when we would talk to you again, being worried, um, seeing something on the news and not knowing where you were or if you were affected by that. So those are some of the concerns you have at home as well. What did you miss most about being home? So I hear things too like I miss sleeping, I miss the food I can eat at home, I miss being barefoot. <laughs> I, I, uh, I always feel bad for the women on the ship because I can usually wear my hair down and they have their hair just, uh, just tight, pushed back and tight all the time and I just, I, you know, I feel for them. I feel like it must be nice to be able to uh, have some options, right? And then this one's going to be a little bit more difficult in how we want to answer it. Um, how do you want to celebrate homecoming? I don't know at what point you're going to be coming back and what the world is going to look like at that time, but be prepared for maybe your support system to not be able to meet you for homecoming or maybe not even be able to travel into the state for homecoming. And again, I have a lot of empathy for you. Um, I've had some old older sailors talk about um, what it was like to come back from a deployment um, after 9-11 and then just walk off the pier onto an empty, um, walk off the ship onto an empty pier and no one was there waiting for them because they were in a lockdown situation. Um, realize that that's going to probably stir up some additional emotions um, of I left and the world was this way and I'm coming back and the world is this way. Um, all of us have general feelings like that right now. Um, I've told my husband a few times coming back from the grocery store, which is my main outing now. That's mostly the only place that I can go other than a walk for exercise. Um, I've told him, you know, the world is weird. Um, if I wear a mask, for example, which is required, they, people can't see if I'm smiling. So I'm actually trying to be cordial with grocery store workers or people I pass on the street and they can't tell because my face is covered. So... Think too about some ways that you can celebrate on your own within the realm of what you can control. It might not be uh, surrounded by a bunch of people, but think about some ways that you can call your family members, have some FaceTime, use some of the approved methods for video calling. Um, think of unique ways that you can interact with people. Um, so. For example, if you live in an, in an area where there's balconies, there's no reason you can't interact with someone at a safe distance. The distance right now that uh, 
the CDC recommends is six feet of separation between you and the next person. So I'm going to come back with some more tips. Um, I'll see you on part two.